Good afternoon, Year 6. Um, so this lesson will be tied in with our home learning pack for this week. So this goes with the topic section of your home learning pack. Hopefully you've cracked on with the maths and uh, your brains are nicely warmed up from all the arithmetic and the reasoning skills that you've been using. So in this particular topic challenge, what we are going to be doing is creating, or by the end of it, we will have written um, a narrative, so a, sh so a short story, and the idea is, is that your short story makes sense. So at the top we can see in the skill it says we're going to write a narrative with clear cohesion. So clear cohesion means that all of our parts of the story link together really well. So just like we would at school, we're not going to have to we're not going to have to write the story immediately, straight away, we are going to build up to our piece of writing. Um, so I'm going to talk you through this in the best way that I can by doing this on the internet. And you guys um, will probably need to pause, come back to this video, um, do this in chunks as well. You don't need to do the whole lesson in one go. I'm going to record it in one go, but you can pause the video and keep coming back to it at different points. So the first thing I'd like you to do to get yourself ready for this task is grab someone in your house, someone that you think will be able to do this with you, and you are going to do uh, retell the creation story from Christianity, so from the Bible, the Bible creation story, with your chosen person in your house. Um, the challenge is that you need to do the 10 word tennis technique. So we are gonna bat the story back and forth between you and your partner. Um, your home learning partner gets 10 words and then you get 10 words and you need to go from uh, the start of the creation story all the way to the end of it. So we have done these in class before, so hopefully you do know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't have a partner to demonstrate this with, so I'm going to pretend to be two different people just to start you off and then you can pause the video and have a go at this with your partner at home. So uh, the creation story does start with the infamous words in the beginning. So uh, person number one, I let's say that is Mrs. Newport, is going to start with in the beginning. So uh, counting my 10 words, in the beginning, the earth was empty and nothing had, so that's my 10 words, so nothing had, so the next person's gonna come in, jump in and continue with their 10 words. So nothing had been formed, the world lay in darkness. Uh, God spoke the, and then person number one would jump back in, immortal words, let there be light and there was light that was a nice little end for person one at the end of a sentence so you're going to just back the story back and forth between you as if you're playing a game of tennis so back and forth over the net and retell the creation story from christianity a story that we should all know really well so just pause the video and have a go at that task with somebody Okay, so hopefully we've got to, on the seventh day, they had a rest and enjoyed the creation. God had a rest, sorry, and enjoyed the creation. Um, so you might be thinking, why on earth, what on earth has the Christian creation story got to do with our topic learning? Well, if we were in school at the moment, we would be well underway with our Mexico topic, uh, one of Mrs. Newport's favorite topics. So I thought rather than us miss out on all of our Mexican topic learning, it would be really nice if we were able to do one of the lessons that we might have been doing if we were to be in school. So we're going to listen today during this lesson to a different creation story. So we're going to listen to the creation story from the ancient Maya civilization. Now, those of you that might have been doing some research about Mexico so far whilst you've been at home uh, might already have heard about the ancient Maya. Uh, the ancient Maya are the civilization that lived in Mexico and other parts of Central America. I think I've 4,000 years ago, so a very, very, very long time ago. They are an ancient civilization. They are way before the Victorian times, way before 
uh, the Tudors are much farther back in time than even the Stone Age that you would have learned about in year three. So very, very long time ago. Um, more in the region of the Egyptians, uh, that sort of time period. So here on the map, we can see the uh, part of Central America. So um, Central America is that part of uh, the Americas. So if you have a look on a map or a globe, you look and you find North America, which is where Canada and the USA are. And then we come down and underneath that we've got South America, which is where we know about that from our Darwin learning, where the Galapagos Islands are. Um, we And then the Central America is the bit in between, the really long thin bit that joins the two continents together. And on this map here we can see that Mexico is one of the countries in that group of um, countries, but there's other countries as well, smaller countries like Ecuador, um, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, I hope I didn't say any that were wrong there. Um, and there are there are lots of Honduras as well as in there. Um, there's lots of countries in that part of the world as well, and they all make up Central America. So the ancient Maya lived in Mexico, but they also lived in some of those other countries that I've just mentioned. So they spanned across the whole of Central America. Um, and they, as I said, they lived 4,000 years ago and they were actually, for an ancient race, a bit like the Egyptians, they were uh, very advanced for their time and they were really quite good at maths and uh, they also had their own writing system, which was very unusual um, for ancient civilizations. So these are, uh, there's lots of really interesting historical artifacts that you can look at about the ancient Maya. So, the, uh, one thing about the ancient Maya is that they had lots of gods that they worshipped. So they didn't just have one god, uh, much like the Egyptians as well. They uh, or the Romans. The Romans had many gods. Uh, they had many, many gods that they believed in, and they had their own idea about how the world had been created. So their creation story is very different to the Christian creation story um, and the way that the world was formed. So what we are going to do is we're going to have a look at the creation story and we are going to find out exactly what the ancient Maya believed and how they believed the world was created. So when we are watching the video of the story of the creation from the ancient Maya, uh, some of you might have printed out the storyboard that was at the bottom of your home learning from this week. It's okay if you haven't been able to do that you can just have yourself um, a notepad or a piece of paper ready and you can just take your notes on that as you're doing it so it's perfectly okay to just jot down your notes like we would do if we were at school so you would do it on your whiteboard if we were at school and um, you can just do it here so this is your first challenge so it might just be that this is the only thing that you do today kind of like our planning session where you are going to watch the creation story and um, I would definitely recommend watching it two or three times so if you watch it once and just enjoy the story the first time and then you go back again and you watch the video again and this time maybe think about taking some notes and and jotting down some ideas, some of the key things that happen, and then maybe watching it a third time and just topping up your notes if you need to. And obviously you can watch it as many times as you want to. There is no problem if you've watched it 10 times and you know the Maya creation story inside out. That will only help you with your writing. Um, so don't just watch it as many times as you like and just this can be your first activity. So you don't need to do this and something else. You can just do this for the first day um, and make yourself a really good set of notes so that you know the Maya creation story. What you should be able to do is at the end, use your notes to retell the story to somebody else in your house. So if you've done a good job of it, you should be able to read through your notes and explain the story to somebody else. So the better your notes, the more, detailed or the more information you remember to put down, the easier you will find your writing later. So we're going to have a look at the video um, and we'll watch it just once on here, but obviously you can pause it and take it back and watch it as many times as you would like at home. Before the world had a true form, there were two gods, 
Tepiu the maker, and Gugumats the feathered spirit. While the world around them was dark, these two glittered with brilliant blue and green feathers. They came together to create the world. Whatever they thought came into being. When they thought earth, land formed in the darkness. They thought mountains and valleys, pine trees and water and sky. All of these things appeared the instant they thought them, and thus the earth was formed. Tepeyu and Gukumats decided they needed beings there to look after their vast creation and to praise their names as the creators. So they created deer and birds and panthers and serpents, all the creatures that roam the earth today. Now, praise us, say our names, commanded the creators. But the animals could only roar or howl, bleat, bark, twitter, or moan. They tried as hard as they could to speak, but could not. They chirped and mewed at the top of their lungs until the noise was so deafening that Tebeu and Gukumats ordered them to stop. Disappointed, the makers agreed that they would have to create better beings, ones who would be able to worship them properly. The first race of men was made from wet clay. The creators gave them life, and the first men tried to speak, but they crumbled apart soon after they were made. The maker and the feathered spirit were determined to create a hardier race of men. The second race of men were carved from wood. These were much stronger and were able to walk and talk and multiply. But these men had no minds and their hearts were empty. They had no memories of their creation and when they spoke their words were just as empty and meaningless. They could not praise their gods. Tepeyu and Gukumat sent a great flood down to destroy them. They commanded the animals to attack the survivors and tear them to pieces. The few who managed to escape fled to the woods and became monkeys. The creators left them there as an example to the next race of men. The maker and the feathered spirit thought for a long time about how they should make the race of men they wanted. There seemed to be no perfect material to build them. Finally, some of the animals brought the gods a stack of white corn, which grew on the far side of the earth. Tepeyu and Gukumats ground this into a paste, and from this formed four individual men. The new beings seemed perfect. They were sturdy enough to last, and their minds were rich with thoughts and feelings. Their first act after their own creation was to immediately worship Tepeyu and Gukumats and thank them for their lives. Tepeyu and Gukumats were pleased. <coughs> what do you see? they asked the corn men. We can see forever through rocks and trees and mountains and to the edges of the earth. We can see your entire creation with all of its animals and plants. We can see and understand everything. Tepeyu and Gukumats looked at each other. Perhaps we made these beings too well. They should not see as well as we do. The makers removed some of the men's vision. After that, they could only see things close to them and were no longer able to see through or above things that they should not. Thus their great understanding of the world was weakened. But the men still sang the Creator's praises and settled down to live on the new land. Tepeu and Gukumats made four women to be their mates. These eight men and women were the ancestors of all Quiche men and women today. Even today their sight and understanding of the world is not perfect. play that and watch that as many times as you like so um i've just been making some notes as i was watching it um and just to show you that obviously the two different ways that you could do it and if you've got your own way of doing it that's fantastic as well so obviously um uh, mrs newport likes to do uh, bullet points like notes so uh, at the top i've got uh, my bullet points so the world is dark and unformed two gods Tepu and Guku Max whatever they thought came into being now I didn't catch everything there so I've left that little bit blank and then what I would do is I would go back and watch the video again and top up my notes and fill that bit in uh, they decided they wanted living things to enjoy the earth and then I might watch it again and just jot down some of those things so I I think they were like jaguars serpents um so just topping up my notes so you might need to watch the video a few times um and also obviously we know from class the more we the more we revisit something the more we read something the more we look at something the more we watch the clips the easier we find it and the more we understand it so you could even 
practice um one of you could be tepu one of you could be guku mats at home and you could pretend you're creating the earth as well just to help you remember um and then the other ways so i know some people like to do drawings a bit like our story maps that we do at school so um we might map out the story with our pictures and put some keywords so um please excuse my awful drawing we'll leave the art to miss dowling she's definitely the artist out of us so uh flood they sent a flood to destroy the men um i think at that point the animals came and just and cleaned up the rest of the mess and the monk uh some of them f fled to the forest and became the monkeys and they were an example to the others um and then the animals bought the corn to create the men so um i would obviously need to watch that again so it again uh, it's really important that you watch the story a few times to make sure that you really do understand it so challenge one however you would like to create your notes about the maya creation story um you create some really detailed notes and if you're working on the storyboard obviously that's already got the pictures on it so you can write down some of the things that happen to go with the pictures um, that are on there already so um, just make sure that you've got a really good plan for your writing and you really do understand the creation story before you try to turn it into a narrative um, next up so secondly our second challenge is on your uh, resources list you were told that you would need a small piece of plain paper so about this size it's fine if you do it this size it's really up to you you're just going to create uh, you're going to become an illustrator so we know an illustrator is the person that does the pictures in uh, storybooks and you are going to draw a beautiful picture from the Maya creation story to go with your piece of writing so this could be of anything that you wanted it to be so if you think of a part of the story maybe something that was your favorite part of the story um, and you can create a lovely illustration that can go alongside your amazing piece of writing obviously you don't need to just stop at one illustration I know that Amethyst class we absolutely love art we love drawing so if you want to do yourself more than one picture to go in your story that you can stick into your story at the end then please do as many pictures as you would like um, but at least one would definitely make your story look really professional really make somebody want to read it so choose one of the parts of the story and create a picture to go with it so you might draw a picture of tepu and guku mats you might draw a picture of all of the animals when they come into being you might draw a picture of the four men that get created first of all or the four men, four men and the four women that get created with them uh, you could do one of the clay people that get made um which whatever you would like to do or the big flood you could do a dramatic flood coming in and washing away that race of men whatever it is that you would like to do draw yourself a really fantastic picture Picture or a few pictures to go alongside your beautiful writing that you're going to do when you create your story so again uh, you can obviously pause the video at this point do your lovely illustrations and that can be another day of your learning something that you do for your story that day um, next up so we're going to now move on to the bulk of our um, challenge so we are going to retell the Maya creation story so now that you've spent some time doing your amazing plan you've watched the video you know the story inside out you've retold it to someone you've perhaps acted it out at home you've maybe made yourself some little clay men and um reenacted them being destroyed um you've made yourself some lovely illustrations some fantastic pictures to go into your story you're definitely ready to give the story a go now so we are going to um retell the story i have a waggle just like we would at school to help you um with how you might like to structure this so we're going to split our writing into five paragraphs um, so we will have just like we would at school so we've got almost like our story mountain our opening and our build up um, to our story and then we're going to finish with our ending and you can write a paragraph a day you might be really enthusiastic you might want to write the whole story in one go just like we would at school um, we'll do our we'll have a look at our paragraph we'll see what it is that we need to put in um, then you can pause and you can go off and do your own writing and you can use my waggle to help you 
and then you can come back to it. So it's up to you how you structure how many paragraphs you would like to do in the day. Um, that's entirely up to you. Within our writing, I've put three challenges down the side. So there will be three different challenges and you need to see if you can get um, one or two or maybe you might really be super keen and you want to do all three challenges into your paragraph so I will show you my waggle we'll have a look at what the challenges were and then I will show you where I've managed to do that in my waggle just to help you with what it is that you should should be doing so we're going to give this a go so we're obviously going to start our story at the beginning with our fantastic opening to set the scene so at the start of creation, when the world was not formed, there were only two immortal presences, Te Tepeu, the maker, and Gukumats, the feathered spirit. Whilst the realm around them was dark, these two gods glittered with brilliant blue and green feathers, which shimmered brightly against the blackness. They decided to come together and create the earth, and this is the story of their earthly design. Whatever the gods thought of came into being. Earth and the land formed around them. Mountains and valleys. Then up they sprung from the dust. Pine trees and water and sky. And there they were, bringing the earth to life. Eventually, they had created a beautiful oasis, a world that they could be proud of yet something was missing. Okay, so we've got our, that's our opening there. We've set the scene. We know there's two gods. They're creating different things. They're thinking about these things. So the three challenges that we have. So um, do not repeat any sentence openers. So you're challenging this paragraph. Can you get through it with different sentence openers for each of your sentences? Challenge number two, can you include a colon correctly in one of your sentences? Now, we've been working really hard, year six, on our colons and semicolons, knowing the difference, knowing what they are used for. So this is a colon challenge. Can you get a colon into one of your sentences? And uh, can you challenge number three, um, rather than keep saying world, because I realised when I was typing this, I was writing world, the world, the world. Um, can you try and maybe get three synonyms in so you're not repeating the world, the word world over and over in your writing? So let's see how well I did. Did I actually manage to do all three of those challenges? So in we can see in blue, I have highlighted my sentence openers at the start whilst they whatever earth, mountains, pine trees eventually, and yet. So I have been successful there. I have managed to start all my sentences with a different sentence opener. Have I managed to get a colon in? Now, if we remember the job of a colon is to introduce something or to tell you more about the thing that you have just spoken about. So it's introducing more information into the sentence, which if we have a look at the where my colon has been used, it says there were only two immortal presences, and then we've got the colon, so we've got our colon, Tepu, the maker, and Gukumats, the feathered spirit. So there were only two immortal presences, and I've used my colon to introduce to you what those two immortal presences are. I'm giving you more information about those two immortal presences. I'm telling you that those two immortal presences are Tepu, the maker, Tepeu, the maker, and Gukumats, the feathered spirit. So my colon has done its job in that sentence. And then lastly, challenge number three, uh, three synonyms for the word world. So at the beginning, I've used the world. I've then switched it to the realm. And then I've used the earth. And then, a bit tenuous at the bottom, but I've gone for a beautiful oasis. So an oasis would be uh, my other synonym that I have gone for there. So I think just about I've managed that orange challenge. Bit, bit loose there. So you can reread my waggle to yourself, have another look at it, and then go off and write your opening to your story yourself. So pause the video, go off and write your opening.
Okay, so hopefully you have created a fantastic opening to your story. Let's continue on to the build up. Okay, so Tepeu and Guku Mats decided that they needed living beings to protect their vast creation and worship them as they so justly deserved. In an instant, they created the animals of the earth, mighty jaguars, stunning quetzals, sleek panthers and slithering serpents who all still roam the world today. Now praise us, say our names, demanded the gods. It was pandemonium. The animals could only roar or howl, twitter or hiss, and no matter how hard they tried, they could not speak to the gods. Dissatisfied, deafened and disappointed, the makers ordered them to stop and agreed that they would need to create more worthy beings ones who would be able to show them would be able to show devotion to them properly okay so we've built up we've got our animals and but they're useless they're not they're not doing their, they're not able to praise the gods as they would like so we're building up to creating this race of men that are going to be far more worthy of the gods so let's have a quick look at what our challenges are for this paragraph so challenge one can you describe so when you introduce the animals and you're saying that they've created this these all these animals can you describe your animals with an with appropriate adjectives so think about adjectives remember uh, the adjective should add to the piece of writing and remember that we don't need a whole list of adjectives one adjective if you've chosen it properly will do the job of three you don't need three adjectives you, if you choose the right adjective that one adjective will do the job perfectly well so choose an appropriate adjective can you describe your animal with it um, include dashes or brackets for your subordinate clause. Okay, so we've worked hard on subordinate clauses in SPAG and we know that we can punctuate them with commas, dashes or brackets. We do them with commas quite often, so I would like you to challenge yourself. Can you punctuate your subordinate clause with a dash or a bracket? And challenge number three, can you include a list of three, so three words in a row, with alliteration so alliteration we know that the starting letter or starting sound is the same to describe the feelings of the gods so have i been successful i believe i have so describing my animals with appropriate adjectives so if we have a look at my writing mighty jaguars stunning quetzals so if any of you have watched um the program that's on BBC iPlayer, the Mexico Earth's Festival of Light, you will know that a quetzal is the most beautiful bird that lives in the Mexican rainforest um, with these amazing tail feathers that grow every year and it's just stunning. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, sleek panthers and slithering serpents. So I haven't said snakes, so I've used the word serpents there, uh, which you know, it sounds even slightly more mature than the word snake, even the words mean the same thing, but I've gone for the more um, ambitious synonym there. Uh, so yes, challenge one, tick. Challenge two, have I included dashes or brackets for my for a subordinate clause? Well, yes, we can see that I have managed to attach on my subordinate clause here who all still roam the world today. So remember if we said our subordinate clause on its own, someone ran in a room and just shouted that out, who all still roam the world today, wouldn't make sense on its own. So we've hooked it on to our sentence with the dash here, because it's our subordinate clause. So we've got our dash here, and we said they created all these animals who all still roam the world today and if you're feeling particularly clever you would know that that was a relative clause it's got our relative pronoun here so what type of subordinate clause or relative clause so i've managed to get my hyphen in uh, sorry my dash not the same thing my dash in and then have i managed my list of three with alliteration for their feelings so they are feeling dissatisfied deafened disappointed and i've started all of those with my letter d there so yes success okay so pause the video have another look, read of the waggle yourself off you go and write your build up
Okay, so you're doing a really good job here. So we're now on to the really meaty middle bit of the story now. Um, our, uh, our climax, yes, our climax of our story. So we're gonna we're going to start creating our races of men, but they're gonna be awful. Uh, everything's gonna go wrong. So here we go. The first race of men were made from wet clay and were as ill-suited to life as a glass sword, shattering into smithereens as soon as they spoke. Determined to create a hardier race of men, the gods whittled their next creation from wood. Although these were much stronger and could even walk, talk and multiply, they had no minds and their hearts were empty. Having no memory about their creation, they spoke with empty words. Unable to praise their gods, Tepeu and Gukumats found this race to be as meaningless as their words. It was time to get rid of them. A great flood was sent down from the heavens to destroy them. The animals were mercilessly commanded to attack any survivors and tear them to pieces. This race were a failure. The few who managed to escape fled to the jungles and became monkeys to serve as an example to the next race of men. Okay, so challenge number one. Got to include a simile about one of the race of men. Now remember, again, year six, we've been working really hard on our similes and we've been not just doing the first thing that comes into our head, really thinking about comparing the two things together to make it a suitable, sensible simile. So we know that Mrs. Newport doesn't like as fast as a cheetah. I don't wanna see anything like that in there. So think of your simile how could you describe the race of clay men? How could you describe the race of wooden men? What would be a good comparison for these things? Think of something that's completely useless and then like a chocolate teapot. Not going to be useful, is it? You put hot water into a chocolate teapot, that teapot's just going to melt. Not a useful thing. So think of things that are useless and try to create yourself a simile about that useless thing and then use it to describe these useless races of men, these men that are no use to these gods. Uh, challenge number two, can you use short sentences to dramatize the flood? So the flood is coming, uh, a great flood, it's going to destroy them, and we know that if we use short sentences, that's going to build up the suspense in our piece of writing. So can you maybe get a couple of short sentences in, in the bit where you're talking about the flood? And can you include a hyphenated word? Now remember, a hyphen looks a bit like a dash, but they don't do the same job. So in a hyphenated word, we've joined two words together with a hyphen. So uh, like man-eating shark, we've joined the word man and eating together with a hyphen to describe our shark as being a man-eating shark, a shark that eats men, rather than a man who eats shark does make a real difference. So um, did I manage to do it? Well, when I was looking through, I actually hadn't managed to include a hyphenated word. So I slightly edited my writing and I also didn't think that I uh, had actually done a good enough job on my short sentences. So I've edited those too. So actually, we're gonna have a look and uh, it's not gonna be exactly like the first bit I read to you. So I have slightly edited the bit with the flood because I realized that I hadn't done enough short sentences and I realized that I hadn't included a hyphenated word. So I've slightly edited the end bit and now I've managed to do it. But I did have a simile, so that was good. So um, my simile was that the first race of men were as ill-suited to life as a glass sword. So think about a glass sword. If I had a sword made of glass, it's not going to be very good when I'm in a battle. That's going to strike somebody's shield and just shatter into pieces. It's going to be useless. That's why we don't make swords out of glass. We make them out of metal, don't we? So you need to think with your simile what would be a good thing to compare it to. Uh, short sentences to dramatise the flood. So I have 
edited, and I have put, the animals were mercilessly commanded to attack any survivors. Fast moving predators viciously tore them to pieces. This race were a failure. And then within that, I have managed to get my hyphenated word, fast moving. So it might be, you could have a quick Google of excellent hyphenated words, uh, razor sharp. Maybe you could talk about how they use their razor sharp teeth to cut them down. Um, that would be a good one. But have a look, maybe you could Google some hyphenated words, find something, oh, that would be a good one, and see if you can get it into your writing. Okay, so have another read through of the waggle, and then off you go, go and write your climax for your piece of writing. Pause the video, write the climax. Okay, so now we are starting to get to our resolution. So we've had our dramatic um, two failed races of men, but we need we can't keep going on making failed races of men. So actually we need a success story now. So we're into our resolution and we are going to write about how we have managed, managed to make our successful race of men from the corn that the animals have bought us. So here we go. Determined not to fail again. Tepeu and Gukumat thought long and hard about how to create the race of men they wanted. Eventually, the solution presented itself when the animals bought the creators a stack of golden corn, which grew on the far side of the earth. Grinding it into a paste, they then used this to form four individual men. Sturdy enough and possessing minds that were rich with thoughts and feelings, the new beings seemed perfect. Worship us and thank us for your lives here on earth, ordered Tepeu. When they bowed diligently before the gods, Gukumats and Tepeu were pleased until they opened their mouths to speak. What do you see? they asked the corn men. Okay, so challenges in this one. Start two sentences with verbs, so with our action words. Uh, challenge number two, can we, so we've got some speech in this section here, so I would like it punctuated with your magic seven. Um, let's say our magic seven together now, and you can say it along with me and see how many you've remembered. So number one, new line, number two, 66. Number three, capital letter. Number four, what is being said. Number five, punctuation. Number six, 99. Number seven, said word. So when you're doing your speech, remember your magic seven and make sure you've punctuated it properly. And challenge number three, can you use one of these synonyms for sturdy in your writing? So robust, durable, well-made, substantial. You could obviously use the word sturdy, that's a good word as well. So have you managed to do that? Um, so just challenge number one, start two sentences with verbs. So I've got uh, the word grinding, grinding it into a paste. They then use this to form the four individual men. And I've got the word worship, so worship us and thank you, thank us for your lives. So uh, yes, I've managed to start doing my sentences with a verb. Have I punctuated my speech properly? Well, I had two bits of speech in there. Um, I've highlighted the second one. So if we have a look here, I've gone down. So number one was new line. So I've gone on to a new line. Number two, 66. Number three, capital letter. Number four, what is being said? Number five, punctuation so I've got my question mark there because it was a question number six is our 99 and number seven our said word they asked so I haven't said said I've used the word asked so yes I have managed to do that lovely job and then have I used a word a synonym for sturdy well I've actually used the word sturdy so um, perhaps I could edit that and use one of those other words as well if I wanted to and so have another read through the waggle and then you're so close to the end now guys ha have a go at your fourth paragraph 
do that resolution paragraph. Okay, last one. So we're on to our ending now. We're wrapping everything up, tying up all the loose ends, finishing off the story really nicely now. So we need our race of men to be slightly dumbed down a little bit so that they can't see as much. And we need our four women to be created. And then we need to just make a little comment about how um, that race of men are not quite as perfect as we would have hoped. So, if we have a quick look at the last one. What do you see? They asked the corn men. We can see time stretching out endlessly before us, beyond the trees of the jungle and the peaks of the mountain, past the edges of the earth to the endless cosmos beyond. Your entire creation is laid before us. We see and understand everything they exclaimed with knowing wonder looking at the men with caution the gods faced each other with a sense of fear taking action tepeu and gukumats weakened the beings understanding of the world by removing some of their vision and restricting it to the things that were close to them the power is safer with us they decided wisely in their final act of creation, the gods made four women to stay with the men and continue to worship their makers accordingly. Thus was formed the eight ancestors of the world, who even today do not show a perfect understanding of their realm or how to protect it. Okay, so we have finished our story and uh, let's take a look at our last uh, three challenges that we were going to going to try and put in that paragraph. So challenge number one, describe what the men can see with some interesting details. So we're not just going to say they, oh, well, we can see the jungle and the mountains and the earth and uh, the stars up in the sky. Try to use some really good description for what they can see. Um, challenge number two, can you use some good words to say that the gods were worried? So obviously they're telling the gods that they can see all these things. They are basically like gods themselves and the gods are worried about this. They don't want more gods. They want people to worship them. So they're going to weaken their powers because the, the thought of these men being as powerful as them scares them a little bit so they're worried about that but we're not going to use the word worry could we maybe use some other words instead of the word worry to show that they are feeling anxious about these men and lastly are we able to get a semicolon into our writing correctly and um, remember in again year six we've been working on our semicolons we know that semicolons uh, join two sentences together that could be separated with a full stop um, but they need to be linked in some way so you need two sentences that link together that flow from one to the other and you remove the full stop from between the two sentences and you can replace it with a semicolon but the two sentences have to be linked together in some way so talking about the same thing on the sim on a similar topic uh, we couldn't just link together two random sentences Mrs Newport went to the shop Mr. Newport went to the shop. That wouldn't work. Uh, Mrs. Newport went to the shop. She bought bread, milk and honey when she was there. I could link those two sentences together with a semicolon. So having a look, have I managed to do this? So have I described what the men could see with interest in detail? I think I have. So I've said that we can see the time stretching out endlessly beyond the trees of the jungle and the peaks of the mountain, past the edges of the earth, to the endless cosmos beyond. It's a hard word to say. Um, have I used words to convey the worry felt by the gods? So I said they looked at the men with caution and they turned to each other with a sense of fear. I think I did okay on that one. And did I manage to get a semicolon out? Uh, semicolon in even uh, your entire creation is laid before us we see and understand everything so I've managed to link those two bits together so if I said either bit either side of the semicolon it would make complete sense on their own uh, but I've joined them together with a semicolon so um, 
now that you've had a go, you've written your whole story, so your, uh, sorry, now you're gonna go off, you are going to write your final paragraph and see how many of those challenges you can get in and make this really fantastic because this is going to be the end of your amazing story that you have created. Okay, so now that you have created your amazing story, hopefully you have read back through it, you have given it to somebody else and said, would you mind having a read of this? Could you please um, have a look? Can you see anything that you think I could improve? Are there any bits I've missed out? Is there any of my punctuation which needs looking at? Have you spotted, could you spot any spellings that I've spelt wrong? And I'll look them up online, I'll look them up with a dictionary. All of those things that we would do at school. So you've had a look, is it, is it looking really fantastic? It's now time for you yourself to have a look through it and just check that your sentences make sense. Make sure that your spellings are as accurate as they can be and that your sentences all flow together properly. You've used the right punctuation in and you can have another look. I've put some of the challenges up there for you. Is there any of those challenges that you could try to include into your writing that you haven't been able to so far. So maybe just with a bit of editing, um, could you put those in? And then it would be really lovely if some of you could send in um, your ama amazing creation stories that you've done. Uh, remember, you don't have to handwrite your creation story. If you've got a laptop or a computer at home and you want to type your story, and I know lots of children in my class uh, like, like it when we type things up, when we type on the computer, please create it on the computer if that is what you would like to do. Um, or you can write it by hand, obviously keep those handwriting uh, skills sharp if you wanted to, um, however you choose to present it would be fantastic, but just make sure that you share your amazing work with somebody at the end. It's always nice to share it with somebody and get somebody's feedback and, and find out just what an amazing job you actually have done. It's nice to hear that you all your hard work has been appreciated. So hopefully um, you have enjoyed this and you have spread it out over your week and you have kept it going and you've actually learned um, a whole new different creation story that perhaps you didn't know before the lesson started. So good luck with your writing. I'm really looking forward to seeing what some of you uh, produce and just keep up the really hard work and I know that, that you guys are just doing an amazing job at home and staying nice and active and stopping those brains from melting into mush. So until the next lesson, take care and good luck with the writing and remember, check, check, check those spellings. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>